All right. Now, uh, I honestly thought this wasn't going to happen until Friday, but Sony had their little keynote. Uh, of course, it's a pre-recorded thing, and they uh, announced the Sony Xperia 1 Mark VI. And I got to say, and, and I hate being that type of um, tech reviewer or critiquer, but it seems like it's a good device. However, it's not worth what they're charging. And I feel that way for a multitude of reasons. So here on GSM Arena's website, where I always come because I don't have the devices in hand, so therefore I can't really do much of anything except for watch what they show us and then come here to see where all the specs are. And the first thing you notice is the fact that it's $1,300. And in fact, um, I have the S24 Plus here, but let's just change that to the S24 Ultra. And, you know, it's been out, the Ultra's been out for a couple months, but it's still, you know, the starting price I think is around either $1,300 or $1,200. But, and, and I didn't want to do just a direct comparison, but you kind of have to. And before we talk too much about that, you know, I just updated that, just to update it. The one thing that I questioned was, is this still a 4K panel? And I, you know, there are a bunch of things about the Sony phones that I do like. And then you come down here and when it comes to resolution, like, no, it is not a 4K panel anymore. And in fact, that pixel density is fine at 396 PPI. But when you compare that to last year's model, it's significantly reduced. Are you going to notice that? Probably not. But I really feel like that was one of the niceties about the phone is that, yes, even though it's a relatively small device in comparison to a laptop screen or a television, you still had extremely high resolution. And here you don't. <laughs> and the one thing that I did hear them say, which was a surprise, was their aspect ratio where in for a while, they've had this long, skinny 21 by 9 aspect ratio, and now they've kind of conformed to the norm of this 19.5 by 9 ratio, which is the same thing that's over here with the S24 Ultra. So it kind of feels like they kind of uh, seceded and just said, you know what? The, the market is what the market is, and there's only so much we can do. So instead of us continuing to be different from everybody else, let's make something that kind of falls right in line and hope that that pulls some people over. There are a bunch of other stuff, you know, on, on the screen uh, or, or in terms of, of specs that I honestly don't care too much about because every year it's just iterative, iterative stuff. <clears throat> and there's nothing wrong with that. Um Interesting here that it says Wi-Fi 7 will be enabled with a software update. So we'll see what happens with that. And of course, uh, battery size has not increased, or I'll say battery capacity has not increased. And now they market it, at least you know, according to what they're saying through the little infomercial that they had, as two-day battery. And uh, two things are allowing for that. One, yes, as I said, the battery capacity hasn't changed, but 5,000 milliamp hours is relatively large. And two, we have what I mentioned before about it no longer being a 4K panel, so it's not trying to drive as many pixels. And three, we are now using a variable refresh rate, so it's an LTPO OLED. So that's good. Instead of it being stuck at 4K 120, the way that it was with previous devices, um, at least here, yeah, it, it's variable. Now, how high does it go? Yes, 120. How low does it go? I don't know. Uh, maybe on Sony's website, you can actually see that, but that's not something that they mentioned. And in all of my preliminary testing with other devices, so far, I've only had what now two devices that have this LTPO tech that actually go from 120 all the way down to one. That was my Xiaomi, whatever. I think I got that to go down to one, but I know for a fact my OnePlus 12R was able to go down to one Hertz. So there's nothing wrong with you know things that only scale down to 10 hertz or, or you know something like that you don't have to get down to one but it definitely does help because frequently when we are looking at our screen there's a static image on it if we're reading something you know so uh but yeah we'll see uh i don't really have much else to say except for the fact that it looks like it's a good device the same way that their previous devices are good 
However, their their issue was one, we already know that they're not gonna advertise, which that's expected. But two, the price, it's just too high. For $1,300, even though I think the S24 Ultra also started at $1,300, the one big caveat that Sony is not including, the same way that Google does or that Samsung does, even OnePlus, longevity of support. So for $1,300, it needs to be supported for as long as the competition. Whatever the competition is, you can you can gauge it from five to seven years of support. For that price, you need to support it for just as long as that. And I can imagine that we're going to get Android, it comes with Android 14, you should get 15 and my guess would be 16. And for a person like myself, yeah, two years of support would be fine because I usually don't hold onto a phone that long anyway but I'm also not spending $1,300 on the phone. <laughs> so if this phone were, let's say the Xperia 1 started at $1,000, I'd say, okay, that's a little more manageable. The Xperia 5 maybe started at $800. I feel like that would be a good price point for it. And then you have Xperia 10, which I don't know what it actually starts at. So, uh, but that's their, their mid-ranger. So yes, they have three phones right now and Based off of what I just said, I feel like that would be kind of like a happy uh, range of pricing, even though I don't know what the Xperia 10 actually starts at. It says 350. So, so yeah, the, the Xperia 10 says 350. So we'll see exactly how much that is, you know, how much that will be when it's actually released. Um, however, the way that the things currently are, there's too much of a gap between that Xperia 10 and the Xperia 5, which also doesn't come out until sometime later this year. So you have your ultra premium flagship device and then you have your i'm going to say budget because it's i think it's too cheap to be considered a mid-ranger if that's the actual price that it's going to be and then you have the xperia 5 which comes out later which is also a flagship uh that will most likely start at a thousand dollars so i i i i don't want to say i'm disappointed because at this point this is what i expect from sony but it would be nice for for them to switch it up one day and be like, oh yeah, starting at eight ninety nine. Like, let's take it back to how much these things used to cost. And yeah, I'd say, hey, you know what? This might be something actually worth recommending. But for thirteen hundred bucks, regardless of what's on the inside, and regardless of how good they claim the camera is, and whatever technology they're using, and the the screen technology, and the the audio experience, it's just like you can buy a a, a Pixel eight A and get a very similar experience for less than half the price. And then of course you could somehow you can get a seven or a seven or, you know, something that's still going to be supported longer than this $1,300 phone. So will I buy this? Probably not. Definitely not at $1,300. If I'm able to find it for seven somehow, maybe, but I know that doesn't happen. And it's not Sony's fault that the used market keeps their prices elevated as well. However, because the starting price is so high, there's, you know, a lot of room for that, for that used market to keep prices elevated as well. Uh, I mean, Samsung devices, they, they plummet. Most Android devices plummet in, in price when it comes to the used market. But uh, these experiences seem to, to stay a little pricey. So yeah, I think I'm a wrap it. Um, definitely check out their little keynote. Other people already seem to have these devices in hand. Uh, so good on them, <laughs> but I'm not disappointed. I'm just, oh, this is what Sony is. This is what I expect from them. Uh, I can't say do better in terms of tech, but I'd say maybe make this a little more competitive when it comes to price. Um, I'm sure, yeah, you know, people like, uh, what's his name? Some gadget guy might come up if, if he does anything with it and say like, yeah, well, in terms of the hardware, it is comparable to the um the s24 ultra or the iphone 15 pro max or something you know like yeah there might be good things about it however then it's like all right support the same way that you know as i mentioned before or find a way to come up with another device that fills that gap between the xperia 10 and the xperia 5. so i'm gonna leave it on that